This is a very common fridge or freezer defrost timer from eBay. And like most of these devices that are designed for consumer goods, it's really, really complex. The way it's wired is complex and the way it works mechanically inside is complex because it's designed to basically achieve a lot with very little uh, components. Well, very little cost, really. I'll plug this in and we can take a look at its power consumption. When the motor is running, it draws a measly 1.3 watts. Nothing really major. The motor will only be running when, in this particular instance when the compressor is running because it only cycles when needed. It measures a certain amount of compressor runtime before doing the defrost. As will become clear when I show you the doodle. But there's a complexity. You see, this came from eBay. It's called uh, TMDF702ZH2, very catchy name. And it's available in two forms. You've got the Model A and the Model B, and never the twain shall mix, because uh, in this case, Pin 3 is the common for a changeover. I think pin 4 is normally closed, pin 2 is normally open. But in this one, the pin 3 is the sort of same arrangement. It's the common uh, pin 4 normally closed, pin 2 normally open. But the connection of the motor is different in them. One of them is to the common contact. One of them is to the normally closed contact. And that's because the motor actually stops during the defrost. It is, as I mentioned, very clever. Things for service. There's a little window in here you can look into and you can see the gears going around. You will see the gears going around because I'll pop the lid in this and plug it in. There's also a bypass thing here for the for initiating a defrost. Now, if I just zoom down a little bit here, as I rotate this, and it's got a device to stop you turning it the wrong way. If you try to turn it the wrong way, your screwdriver will literally just ride out. It's got little ramps and it just pushes your screwdriver out. But if I turn this, it clicks around because it's got a sort of clutch mechanism so you can override it but you'll hear a distinct switching noise followed immediately by another switching noise are you ready i'm about to do it that was the first switching noise followed immediately by the second switching noise and as you rotate it around the rest of the way it's actually resetting contacts that clicking is the clutch slipping it's resetting contacts, but once a revolution, it comes around and goes click, click. And the on off, the changeover state is in the immediate vicinity of each other. It's interesting. I shall open this up. That's a good thing. We do want it opened up. And you can see the complex switching mechanism. And then I shall draw the schematic of how this works. Simplified, because uh, when it's buried in the schematic of a fridge or freezer. It gets fairly complex. Is this going to come off? Am I going to regret this? Is it going to explode into millions of pieces? Let's... Ah, oh, there is a hidden screw under there. Uh, where's my spudger? Let's get the spudger into it. Is this going to come off? Have I screwed up already? Is it clipped on as well? It may be clipped on as well. I'm not really sure. Uh, tell you what, let's see. How, let's get these connections off, and I shall slide a screwdriver in so I can use a bit more force. I think it may actually be pinning those contacts down. That might be part of why it's knocked me out. Mm, I think it is. Bear with me as I faff around with this. Oh, that is kind of clipped down. Oh, not now it isn't. Or is it? Oh, this is uh, this has already gone horribly wrong. This happens a lot. It is kind of clipped in. Oh, you know what? What's the bet that this screw from the motor at the other side is probably... Does that mean I'm going to have to take both these screws out? Yeah. The screws to the motor are actually holding it together as well. That's just a little bit annoying. Does that mean, mean the motor is going to drop right off now? Maybe I won't be showing it uh, operating once it's open. Is that going to come open? Oh, there it goes. Okie dokie. Right. I think I could probably hold this in. I'm just looking at the mechanism here. Oh, I'm seeing what, more or less what I want to see here. Right, okay. If I rotate this around the screwdriver, you'll see these springy contacts. It's currently making contact between these two. If it doesn't all just ping apart instantly as soon as I rotate it. Hold on. 
if I rotate it round, oh, a spring is, I think something's popped out. If I rotate it around, I should have left it in the just about activate position. That clicks over, and that contact is now bridged to that one. But as it rotates just a tiny, tiny bit more, the other one will click over, and then it returns to that one. It's a very tiny movement. And part of the reason for that is because this cogwheel here has one little tooth indent in it. I'm going to have to zoom down on this even further. It's like, it's very small detail. Do you see that little indent tooth? As this rotates, it catches on the edge of this and it pushes it round one step at a time. For every revolution, it suddenly increments this round. It doesn't just crawl round slowly. It is actually going in round little pulses. But it's so slow that if I was to leave this running, let's say I get the power back onto this and see what happens, see if I can uh, show you something, some of this operating. Is this going to just fly into millions of pieces? I shall stuff, I shall put the neutral on over there which is the motor connection. You can actually see the motor wires are actually just folded up over these contacts. It's, it's very, very mass produced. I'm going to plug it in gingerly. And, okay. Now, something to look at. Is this in focus? It may just be too zoomed up. Uh, if you look at this wheel here, in fact, you know what? I'm going to put a Sharpie dot on that. That's the best bet. If you look at this wheel down here, and I put a little Sharpie mark in that, you'll see it, it rotates in little bursts. See how it moved round and then it stopped? And then after a while, it's going to move round again. This is a way of getting a very decisive stepping motion. And it's using that same thing that one of those wheels under there has a little pin. Is it this top wheel? Hold on, I shall unplug it. I shall unplug it so I can finger this. Is this wheel also got that little pin thing in it? I think it might have. Oop. Yeah. It's got one little tooth here that as it rotates, I'll bring this back into focus, as it rotates, it actually increments this wheel round in steps. And then, hold on then, can I buy it? Can I override that and actually make this? I, I think I can. Now I've removed that cog. Let's put this one back on. And I shall try and wind this round manually to see if I can get this to show the incrementing effect. It's trying to push it out of position, but hopefully we can see this. If I wind this round, you'll see that the, the main wheel is rotating round in steps. For every revolution of that wheel, it's not really showing it too well. No, I'm just wasting everybody's time. No, it's actually bouncing up and skipping. But if we then take this out, there is a ramp, a double ramp, one that's affecting one contact, one that's affecting the other. And most of the revolution of that blue wheel very slowly is actually resetting those. It's pushing those contacts back and then effectively letting one go and then the other one go. And by doing that, it offers for a very tiny movement of that, that one single increment round from that wheel, it basically lets it switches over it switches the contacts over and then back again. Right, I'm going to zoom back out again before we get too bored with uh, with watching small cogwheels rotating at very low speed. It's not exciting. Let's get the electrical connection out of the way. It has more or less done its thing. So the reason for that sudden changeover is because the motor actually stops during the defrost. And I have drawn down here Let's uh, just focus down onto here and lock that off. And I shall zoom in a bit. I should not zoom in too far. Maybe I should have drawn this sideways, but not to worry, I didn't. So if I get some pens, I'll get the orange because the orange is closer to brown, isn't it? So normal mode, the timer, here's the timer motor. Here's the compressor that runs the fridge or freezer. I've just, I've not drawn the rest of the circuitry and I've just drawn it as a motor. There's the start circuitry, there's the overload circuitry. I've, I've kept it to a minimum. 
And over here, we've got the defrost circuitry, which is the defrost heater, and it's got the defrost thermostat. Power comes in, and it goes through the thermostat, which is calling for heat, and as it's calling for heat, power is normally diverted to the compressor, and the compressor has a connection going to the neutral, as indeed does this. I should draw these in there. In normal operation, this defrost stat, because the system is cold and it's, it opens when it reaches a high enough temperature, so it's normally closed, and at this point in time, the... Have I just put the wrong cap on? Yes, I have. The motor is effectively connected via that defrost switch to neutral, and it's also getting its live from up here. So the motor is running. But the motor is only running when the compressor is running. When it goes into defrost mode, I should just see these pens out of the way again. When it goes into defrost mode, when that motor changes over, and it, as soon as it happens, that motor is going to cut off, as I shall show you. So now, it changes over into the defrost mode. The current is going through the thermostat still because... Even if the thermostat opened, if it just happened at the wrong time and turned off the compressor, because the, the, the case is getting warm, it will eventually call for the heat again. It will continue. But the current is currently flowing through this, and it's going to the heater. And the heater is effectively getting its neutral from this stat, providing a path like this. At this point in time, the motor has effectively been disconnected. This end of the motor is connected to neutral via the compressor, but it's also connected to neutral via the defrost stat, so the motor stops. The heater heats up and it heats the uh, evaporator plate. The evaporator plate is the panel in the fridge or freezer that uh, is cooled down by the tr transition of liquid to gas or vapour uh, in the compressor cycle. So it, is, it has a tendency to form the ice because it's the coolest thing in the fridge. So that's heating up, and once it reaches a high enough temperature, this stat opens up. And at that point, because this is open now, the current flows, it can't go down there, so instead it finds a path through the motor of the stat, and that, the other side of the motor, finds a path to neutral via the compressor and the motor starts running again and that's the point that after a very short delay it clicks back over and normal service resumes it's very complex they've done so many cost cutting exercises to keep this to the absolute minimum so that uh, stepping system for making the contacts change over quickly and these current paths that are detecting things like the defrost thermostat to actually uh, switch back to defrost after that certain length of time. It's very clever. It's very neat. It also suggests that under certain circumstances, uh, like the defrost heater going open circuit or failing, that the, uh, the motor, the fridge, will just stop working at that point just because it depends on those components. It's complex. It's strange. And not every manufacturer uses the same sort of techniques. It's the schematic in many fridges and freezers is fairly similar, but not in all of them. And this is just a cheap generic. Oh, this comes off as well. Is there going to be any, any value to taking this off? I don't think there's any value to taking it off. I think it's trapped by the fact these wires have literally been bent round. Yes, the wires have been run up, the contacts have been wedged in, and then the wires have been bent round to trap everything in place. It really is super, super cheap and simple. But there we go. That's it. It's complex. It's simple, but like also very complex. And uh, if you ever hear your fridge or freezer make that loud mechanical clicking noise, there's a good chance it's this that's done that. And these are the sort of things that, you know, over time, if a speck of dust gets in, it can jam them. And if that happens, your fridge may just build up frost. You know, there's a couple of things that could happen there. It could be like uh, one of the defrost components failing, or it could be this failing to actually put it into the defrost cycle. But I like the fact that it, the motor only runs when the compressor's running in normal mode. 
so that it is effectively only providing defrost based on the actual runtime of the unit and terminating that defrost as soon as it comes up to the temperature with the defrost thermostat. It's all very simple and all very clever, but sophisticated too.